So 6.5, half of the unit had to deal with factoring difference of squares. 6.5 also mentions something called a perfect square binomial. Now a perfect square binomial basically means that you'll have a trinomial that will give you two parentheses that are exactly the same. Here you always stumble upon them, so I don't make a big deal about knowing the formula for a perfect square trinomial. What I tell people is this. Let's take a look at this problem here. The first thing that you would do when it says factor completely is to ask yourself, is there a GCF? And we can see no matching set of parentheses, ladder, ladder, no ladder. Number wise, if you break down nine, it's three and three. If you break down 25, five and five. So these don't have any numbers in common. So we don't have a GCF for parentheses, letters, numbers, and it doesn't start with a negative. So there is no GCF. So we count how many terms that there are. One, two, three. Now, 6.5 says you post to recognize that this is a perfect square trinomial. You might be saying, wait, how do you recognize this is a perfect square trinomial? Because the first term is a perfect square. And we just learned perfect squares. 9 would be 3 and 3. A squared is A and A. And 25 is a perfect square. 5 and 5. Then the book says you've got to check the middle. And the middle is 2AB. The square root of this, which is 3A, the square root of this, which is 5, times it by 2. So 2 times 3A times 5, that gives you 30A. I think that's just totally confusing. So I don't do this as a perfect square trinomial. What I say to you is, once you realize that it's three terms, then what you want to do is ask yourself, are we going to do shortcut? No, it has a leading coefficient. Are we going to do foil? Mm, maybe. Am I going to do arch? I think I'm going to do arch. So arch is basically, if you forgot, go back to 6.4 AC method. Multiply those two numbers. Remember, arch is the first step. Eight steps. First step is draw the arch and multiply. Remember, you're allowed to have a calculator for the test. So 9 times 25. That's 225. Whoa, that's a big number. Now, because you have a calculator, you could theoretically go for the list. Go 1 and 225. 2 won't work. 3 does. 3 times uh, 75. 4 won't work. 5 does. You could go for this list. But... Here's the trick. If you recognize that this is a perfect square number, and this is a perfect square number, that means this is a perfect square when you multiply it. So 9 times 25 is 225. Remember on the list, 225 was the last one on the list? That was 15 times 15. If you know this is a perfect square, then we know that the combination 15 and 15 would work. Now, maybe you didn't get all the combos, but remember, once you find your combos, you knew that you were going to add the list. Notice, this is the combo that gives you 30. So it doesn't matter what these are. As long as you find the combo that works, then you don't have to find all the combos in the list. Maybe that's a little confusing for you. So if you want to go through the list, one, two, three, four, five. After five, six, six doesn't work. Seven doesn't work. Eight doesn't work. Nine works because we just did it. Nine times 25. 10 won't work. 11 won't work. 12 won't work. 13, 14, and 15. And then you could just do your traditional. But anytime that you get a very large number, 
I suggest see if you can get the square root of it. On your calculator, you have a square root button. You'll hit the square root button, then put in 225, and then hit equals. And if you get 15, you know that 15 times 15 works. If you get a decimal point, then it's not a perfect square. You have to go in order to find your list. So that was just a shortcut on how that you don't have to go through the whole list to find the combo 15 and 15. If you know this is a perfect square and this is a perfect square, try the square root. See if this adds to be that term in the middle. Or just realize that you have to do all the combos. See which one works. If you find a combo that works, remember after step three, step one was the arch, step two is the list. Step three was add the list. Step four was to choose a combo. Step five, split. Remember, the 30 goes away, where 15 and 15 are the new coefficients. You bring down the variable part to each term, a and a, and then we need sine, step six. Remember, you look at the last sign of the trinomial, when it's a plus, anytime that you add, we know it's going to be the same signs. So they're going to be identical to each other. So since it's the same number, 15a and 15a, they both get the same sign as the middle. Remember, same. And then step seven. Bring down the first term. Bring down the last term. And now that you have four terms, you are done with the arch or AC method. Because you have four terms, remember to do factoring, you do now 6.1 grouping. So parentheses around the first two terms, parentheses around the last two terms, include the sign in the second set of parentheses. Here, you can take out a GCF of 3a, so you're left with 3a, remember, divide each term by 3a. So you're left with 3a minus 5. Here they have a GCF, they both have a 5. And because it starts as a negative, take out a negative 5 out of each term. When you do that, you're left with 3a minus 5. See how the parentheses match? They must match because you found the combo. So these matching parentheses become 1. And notice my leftovers, 3a minus 5, become the other. See how we have two parentheses that are identical? That's why this one was known as different, uh, this one was a square, perfect square trinomial. Because when you get your answer, this is a perfect square binomial. But for most part, if you didn't recognize this is a perfect square and a perfect square, just do like you normally do with three terms. Either do it as arch or foil, and then just happen by chance that you get two parentheses that match exactly.